How are we doing today? My name is Coach Derry, uh, Michael Derry. I'm the defensive coordinator at Fairborn High School. I would like to thank Coach Banstro for giving me uh, an opportunity to speak about something I feel pretty deep about. Uh, last year was my first year ever being a defensive coordinator at 23 years old. Uh, I kind of didn't know where to begin. Uh, I credit a lot of it to my mentor, Coach Joel Durge. Uh, Nick Banstro helped me out a lot, and I'm just happy to be able to talk about some of the stuff that I did last year and how it was uh, really productive for me. Uh, my email and uh, Twitter handle is below next to me if you want to jot that down. Feel free to follow me or email me if you have any questions. Um, I have no problem helping you out with my doc docs. I have a bunch of Google Docs for you guys. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait to get started. So, uh, first off, uh, Saturday. Um, the first thing I want to go over is I made this defensive uh, checklist. Something my mentor did, uh, Joel Dirge. And uh, something I kind of made it work for me. But Saturday, you know, I have opponent scout, label formation, all these plays, second and third long, stuff that I did for myself. And I made one for all my defensive coaches, stuff that um, what we're going to label on, uh, which huddle, all that good stuff, and what we're going to fill out for opponent breakdown. Um, I draw the run plays, perimeter plays, all that. And if you want a copy of this, I'm more than welcome to give this to you. Um, it had basically all my checklist stuff, what I need to do from starting on Saturday through Friday. That to me is the week, football week, the fiscal week is what I call it. So what else I do on Saturday? I have a 24-hour rule. Um, for when the game ends, for when the game, for the next week, I wait 24 hours before I even think about game planning. Now, I come in early or I wake up early. I watch the game on my laptop. I'll take brief notes of the previous game. Um, I really try not to grade. There's too much emotion. And I usually try to do my position gradings on Sunday and Monday. And I just really like talking to my kids about it. Uh, I do no game plan. And again, too much emotion. You know, if we had a really tough loss, then the next day I'm probably going to be a little disgruntled and I'm not engaged. Um, I watch film with my unit. Um, we always try to break off into as small as groups as we possibly can. And whatever the head coach needs you to do, whether I go to the JV game, I help out with J uh, lifting. Whatever the head coach needs, I do. And uh, I tell my coaches and myself, I fill out all my huddle calling by 6 p.m. And I watch games, but I just do it to get a feel for them. And Saturday, I always tell my coaches, including myself, enjoy your time with loved ones. It's a great time to recalibrate and refocus. Uh, Sunday, we have a staff meeting. And all important docs are filled out as, by us early in the morning, right before a meeting. We usually come in 1 to 4. It's not normal for me to come in anywhere from 7 in the morning to 9 based on how much stuff I need to do. Um, some of these, this isn't all of them, but this is very vague about what we do. Um, I have my situational sheets, which you have a two-minute sheet, a third down overview, which my third down overview would be like what personnel they are in and all third down scenarios, how they do against a three-man rush, four-man rush with man, all that good stuff. Um, again, I have a bunch of docs, you know, a four-minute sheet. Um, that way I can break it off out of my tendencies when I do my reports. Um, I have a red zone overview, trick play sheet, a two-minute sheet. Um, then I get to the, my personnel sheet, and here's my personnel summary sheet. Um, basically, break down each, their top three personnel and what they like to do out of field zone, down in distance, um, are they under center, pistol, shotgun, and uh, run plays, pass type, and we really try to get a good feel. And I, it takes, after I do the huddle, it takes 20 minutes to fill out, and it's good to have, you know, the next day when we review film and with all the coaches. So, um, what we do on Sunday as a staff is... Uh, we try to do a really good job of watching the most recent game a couple of times. Um, really kind of get a hammer of what they did last week and what they did well. And I usually try to get time for one more game. And then we decide what they like to do. Are they a gap scheme, zone scheme? Are they RPO based? Are they just trying to equate numbers in the run game? Um, are they a wing T team? Are they jet team, buck sweep? Uh, so on and so forth. And then we... Uh, plan to take away their top three run pass plays. I mean, that's pretty obvious. So the, the one thing I think we really get caught up in is how we take the top plays away. 
Um, I really take pride in identifying how they adjust you taking away their best play. What do they do? What is their adjustment? And once we identify them getting it taken away and what they like to do, and then I'm going to practice that just as much as I am talk, taking away their top three stuff. I, I, I want to totally disrupt their rhythm. And uh, after that, I draw up formations, break them down, what they want to do. You know, if they're doubles, are they inside zone, bash? Um, if they're an 11 personnel type team, or are they running wham? Are they running inside zone split, uh, power counter, power read, any of that stuff? Um, and then I determine if we need any checks. I try to stay away from checks. Um, for one, I, I, I sometimes relying on kids to make the right check call is tough, especially for a formation they only see once or twice a game. On top of, I, I think there should always be two or three ways you defend a certain formation. So uh, that way, late in the game, offense doesn't know what defense you're going to be in. You can keep them on their toes and keep them a little bit more in check and make them think. And then after that, we uh, finalize the scouting report, um, which I'll show you on my next page. This is what we showed the kids on Monday. And this is something that I, I worked on this year. Uh, Coach Banstra drew up a really beautiful uh, uh, scouting report for special teams, and I did a lot of the same stuff he did. You know, I have a basic scouting report. This is something that we're going to do on third down and fourth down this year. It's called Clutch. Um, anytime they get a turnover, we're going to say, we got one. Our keys to victories, starters, uh, just an offensive overview, the field zone breakdown, all of that stuff. If you want any copies of that, just reach out to me. I'm more than happy to go more in depth with it. We're trying to keep this on a short time, so we really get after it here. Um, what else I do on Monday is once we kind of put the game plan together here. Um, I have a walkthrough with our kids. We go over their formations, what kind of personnel they are, and the top grade. After that, I kind of let the D-line coach do what he needs to do on Mondays. And I really try to do it with what we call half drill. Other people call it twins alert. But I have half varsity, half JV. This allows varsity going against varsity and JV going against JV. It keeps it really simple. And this is not scripted. It's 10 to 15 plays. Rapid fire, rapid fire. After about seven or eight, we'll flip. Other varsity DBs go in, and if you're a varsity DB or player, you're going to go on offense. And I want random pass plays out of two-by-two two trips, anything that we can do. Um, and at, for the most part, I ideally like it, not what we're going to see this week where they have it shown. And this saved us a lot of times where if we shut down their run game, I remember we played Troy, and they came out with some pass concepts they didn't show a ton. And our kids didn't react poorly because they've seen every concept a million times. And that's because we did that on Monday and randomly throughout the week. We just throw in an extra play. So even if they, they hadn't seen it that week or we haven't practiced our coverage that week, they're able to just be able to just go because of what we're – they just see it every day, every Monday. Um, and then, you know, D-line, I let them kind of do whether they want to do pass work rush stuff, if they want to do re-block, whatever. And I start my call sheet. And uh, how I do my call sheet, I kind of write, I have a written version of this where I fill this out. You know, I, I always start with first and 10 and possession and 10. And I basically base it off the hash on back up. So I base it off different field zones, right hash, middle, left hash. I, I want to know if it's a runner pass, what run direction, are they running to the strength or away from the strength, pass direction, are they doing it right or left to the field, is their pass run to the strength or away, you know? So just stuff to getting on, on top of. Possession and 10, the same concept. Um, break it down to the absolute smallest detail. And a lot of people like taking statistics and formulate their call sheet, and I'm 100% I'm for it. This allows me to keep me a little bit grounded and not making an emotion, but at the end of the day, football is an emotional sport. And you, sometimes your emotions are right, but this gives you a really good statistic on where the ball is going to go so you never put yourself in a horrible situation. Um, on Tuesday, we set our books for the day. Um, I make sure they're ready, usually by 12 o'clock with the scripts. Um, here's a set of scripts that I do. Um, on Tuesday, I really like to get after it here. Um, Tuesday's usually our day of full contact, full speed. So I'm going to do third and short on front seven or inside run. We're going to get after it a little bit. Um, 
all of their third and short plays and occasionally their fourth and one and fourth and medium. Um, I want them to know, I, I try to do a breakdown by down and distance. This is what you're going to see on third and short. They wrap it one, two, three, several times. Anything three yards or less. Um, we get the perimeter drills. We do first and ten, second and longs. First, same thing for team. So that's what we do on Monday or uh, Tuesday. On top of, I like to continue my uh, call sheet. And usually after practice, I like getting with my DB coach and outside backers, and I ask them to follow. How do we line up today? Um, do our kids understand what we were doing? Do they understand the game plan? Do we need to exclude or include a coverage? Um, are we struggling to pick up something? Do we like what we're doing? Are they picking it up? Is everything doing? Or do we need to make any changes? Do we need to maybe back up on our game plan and look at something else and revert to it Wednesday? And same thing for my call sheet. I do it, but, and then I work on second down and third down. Uh, Wednesdays, uh, make sure my books are ready. Wednesdays, I do a little bit different. I set books up every single day. It takes very little time to do, but it's also very nice. You know, front seven is all first and ten plays. And then team defense, we're going to get after it a little bit. We'll do all of third downs. You know, we're going to work on clutch. And uh, so we, we basically kind of go over perimeter, same concepts. Um, I really put an emphasis on third down. You know, we want to get off the field. Um, last year, uh, I, I put a team goal of 30% on third down. And we, were, we let up around 33% of the time, which wasn't horrible. Um, I, I changed around a struggling defense. I wanted to keep it realistic. But the one thing I learned of all my team goals... What you preach is what you got. I, I got it to a T and all four of my team goals. So I decided to lower them a little bit and make them a little bit more challenging. Um, but we got to get off the field. And I want it 20% or less. So I put a real Wednesdays are just getting off the field days. Inside run, we do first and 10 runs. Um, I do a special play, always first. Get them on their tails. Um, I usually try to do a boot play or my outside backers keep them contained. I do a reverse, same thing, and then a screen play. Uh, something that we see one of those plays probably once a game. I want to practice that four times a week, but try to put a little bit of emphasis. So after I set the book, so I meet with my D-line coach. And I, I go over the exact same things. Um, I usually like to ask him for my, his coverage explanations too. Um, he's smart. He knows our defense very well. He knows what we're trying to do. Um, but how do we line up on the front wide, front three? Uh, do our kids understand what we're doing? Same thing. Do we exclude a coverage? Um, one thing I really like, in the, uh, do we need to change anything on our front? Do we need to slant more? Do we need to line up where we need to go more? Um, do we need to bliss a little bit more? Ideally, I don't like blissing a ton, but just getting his input and seeing how his D-lines are handling it. And then I finish my call sheet, and I go over just finalizing whatever I didn't get done on Tuesday. Here's a copy of my call sheet. Um, it's a little weird. It's a little big and obnoxious. And again, I do everything based off all my call sheet. It's put together and just kind of get after it a little bit. This is what we did against Bellbrook here. And my coverages are always in green except for right here. So for some reason, I just needed to see green. Um, but for the most part, my primary call is always yellow. That's what I'm going to call. These are my two fronts. And this is my blitz. Later in the game, if I think it's something going, they're running belly or anything like that, then I'm going to go opposite of my call. Um, if, I, if you see pink, sometimes that is my last resort. If I think they're taking a shot, if I, if I think they're going to do something, I'm going to call. This is my last resort. If I'm a little bit desperate. So, and that leads me to Thursday. I think Thursday is probably one of the biggest days in the world for me. Um, it's something I take a lot of pride in. Again, we have our, our Thursday script. Um, everything is, now I'm getting a routine. And I usually try on team, we do backed up, open field, and then we're going to go red zone, goal line, two point play, the third and long play, and the fourth and medium play. And uh, then we do some trips right Hail Mary. I always try to put that right here. The fourth and five play, I kind of want it to be a secret. Um, I don't really want to know what it is. Because um, for the most part, uh, I think last year I played, a, we, we played one team 
that had any kind of a fourth down and long play. And so I don't necessarily know what they're going to do. I usually try to revert back to the third and long play. What's their best play? Um, inside run, I do first and first and second and long. Same thing with the perimeter. But for the most part, we, I like to do a game stimulation, get a feel for what they're going to try to do. And that kind of leads into what we're going to do for me as a staff and getting ready. On Thursday, I meet with everyone. And it's a really brief meeting. I discuss the game plan. This is how we're going to attack them tomorrow. Um, then we go over adjustments to how we're going to go against their adjustment. And then one thing I want to get done is rotation. We, unfortunately, we're not a big enough school that we can platoon our entire team. Um, my best player on defense is our best player on offense. So I, we got to do really be creative on how we get him rest so he can ball out on offense and vice versa. Um, and then one thing I do on Thursdays, as I begin watching full games, start to finish, from all special teams in order, it gets me in rhythm. I get a feel for understand why they're doing it. You know, why did they take a shot on this play? Um, why did they take a sh trick play? I mean, whatever the situation. Maybe it was after a fake punt that I wouldn't have gotten on a normal, a normal time looking at film. Um, and then I rehearse the game using a call sheet. And I make calls based on gaming situations. So I print off my call sheet and I just sit on my desk. All right, first and 10, play, I have my play after sheet, all of this stuff. All right, what do they do? Okay, this is what they like to do, make a call. Get a feel for it. You know, I, I'm a big mental imagery guy. So if we're gonna talk about our kids and how they need to take mental reps, then I need to do that for myself. And the one thing it's done for me is just, I know what, I know when they're gonna go for a fourth down and when they're not gonna go for a fourth down. I know when they're gonna, what they're gonna do after a long play if they get 25 yards entering in the plus 50 yard line. So it's stuff like that that I wouldn't have been able to pick up just solely looking at the offense and a breaking down film. And then that comes with Friday. Um, Friday all day, I continue to watch full games. Last year we played Troy, week eight. I had, we had five or six games. So that takes some time to get through. I take my time with it. Um, you know, Xenia, we've had eight out of the nine games possible. So you take your time, make sure you really get in the groove with them, and win the game, man. You put in all this work, it's an 80-hour work week, you get it done. You just trust your call sheet, trust your adjustments, and know what your kids are capable of doing. Um, before I end it, I want to give you my Friday night spot and rolls. Um, now, this is something I kind of do. This is what I like to hear on the headset. Uh, really... Football is an emotional game, and I want, I want to be able to just tell coaches we got to relax a little bit. So, so Toby is my DB coach, and uh, he's going to be up in the box for me this year. And one thing he does is he's going to confirm to me a down a distance, hash, middle of the field. No one speaks besides Toby. I, I, that's a huge emphasis for me. Toby's going to tell me the personnel, and he, he'll suggest your coverage. Uh, he's been coaching a lot longer than I have, a lot of great head coaching experience, great coordinator experience. I'm going to revert to his judgment, and I want to hear his uh, suggestion. And then I'm going to call the coverage, and then I'm going to talk to uh, Spain and Smith, who are my outside linebackers and uh, D-line coach, and I'm going to talk front seven, what stunt. Um, that's going to be very brief. I'm, I might not even talk to him. Um, if I want their suggestion, then I'll say, all right, everyone's silent. And what that means, this cue for me saying, all right, let me think. I'm going to make my call and then do their assigned spotter rolls, repeat. Um, my DB coach in the box, he, he has the call sheet, other sheets deemed needed. Um, usually he'll have his uh, play after sheet, two minute, uh, four minute, and uh, red zone overview. Um, he'll commentate DD and D. &D. Uh, he'll look for personnel sub, personnel grouping. He'll tell me the formation and he'll relay the play and wide receiver actions for me. Uh, he obviously suggests a certain coverage, remind me of tendencies if I'm getting a little sloppy or my emotions are taking over. Um, our D-line coach, he's going to be on the field with a headset 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage. He'll watch the O-line for zone and gap scheme. Then he'll shift them off backfield. Um, he want, he's going to tell Derry and who got the ball if there was a crease within the defense. Was there a hole? Was it small big? Did we fill our gaps? Are we getting washed up front? Um, and then he's going to substitute D-line that I feel he feels the need to be in. I'll trust his judgment, 
Now, if I need someone in or out, he'll do it. But for the most part, I'll let him be a position of his own group. Spain is going to be the same thing. He's going to signal the coverages in to the D, uh, DBs. And then he, I want him back farther so he can tell me if our outside linebackers are aligned properly. Um, I want him knowing, if, are we doing a good job squeezing, spilling, long arming? Um, are we being red? Uh, I want him silent when the play is over so I can talk to Toby. Um, substitute both inside linebackers and outside linebackers when needed. If starters are in, cross the 40, get them in now. On the field headset, for me, I'll be at the right at the line of scrimmage watching the point of attack. Um, I want to help with down and distance awareness. And I was sitting in the front seven after I determined what coverage we'll be playing. I like working from the back end. That way I know who I can and cannot blitz. And just that, that's our cycle. I, I usually try to leave no stone unturned and get after it. Um, again, my name is Coach Derry, um, the defensive coordinator. This will be my second year out at Fairborn High School. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or follow me on Twitter. Um, if you want any of my Google Docs, I'm more than well, willing to share. Get a hold of me and we'll talk logistics. Um, we're in the business of helping people out. So I want to thank Coach Banstra for allowing me to talk about this. And uh, good luck. And good luck next year. Get after it. Thank you.